Yum, yum! Hey, Matt here from Pixel Fondue. This is the second episode in a series of tutorials that will outline my process in creating a shot like this. In the first episode, I went through the Ladybug's six-legged rig creation in Character Box. In this episode, I will go through the face rig quickly and the Character Box binding process of the mesh to the rig. Firstly, I like to make the boxes more transparent so I can see the mesh clearly. To do this, Cbox automatically creates materials for the rig, seen here as segment item and rig item in the shader tree. Let me just quickly explain the differences between a rig item and a segment item. Character Box has two rigging items that you can use to help deform mesh. One is a segment item, the other is a rig item. The rig items are used for normal deformations, but the segment items are used for characters with like noodle arms and you need a better curve uh, or a twist bones to help the character deform. For this ladybug character, I didn't need that, so I didn't rig with the segment items. However, with other characters like an ant that I have, he has very long limbs and the segment items help to create really nice curves along the long noodle arms. Okay, back now in the uh, shader tree, we want to make the rig items more transparent so we can see the underlying mesh. Create a group material. I already have a folder in the item list that I use for all the controllers for the character. So copy part of that name and paste it in the material group's name with Matt, M-A-T-G-R-P for group. And then drag the rig materials into this group. Back in the item list, drag the Cbox rig into the control folder. I like to color coordinate my folders, so the control folder is a light purple, so I will make the material group the same. Now, since we have the rig materials in a folder, we need to change the group item setting for the material group. Copy the item group name and paste it in the group item name and select it. Now the materials will only affect the materials in the assigned item group. We can change the transparency of the rig item material, change it to 95%, so now we can see the mesh clearly. The wireframe is a little bit faint, so hit O on the keyboard to bring up the viewport settings, and in the active meshes tab, adjust the wireframe opacity to 10%. That should be fine. Okay, now let's look at the face controls. I have the eye mouth position and mouth shape controls here. I added a label in the display tab. You can change the label offset easily here. So the eye control moves the position of the pupils. The mouth control moves the position of the mouth and the mouth shape morphs the shape of the mouth. I rigged this all with the help of the Pixel Fondue William Vaughan 60 second tutorial on the 2D face rig that can be found on the Pixel Fondue YouTube channel. Check it out as well as all the other tutorials as they are a fantastic source of information. So this technique uses mesh ops to create all the shapes of the face. I expanded on that idea by adding morph targets and the transform mesh op so I could move the pupils and the mouth. Once you check out William's quick tutorials, you'll understand how to set all this up. Now I need to do some house cleaning and rename all the controls. Cbox or character box gives all individual names to the rig. But with a custom rig, it is a good idea to rename them all to suit the character and the joint. I'll pause the recording and jump ahead for this process. Now that all the joints are named correctly, we can start binding the mesh to the rig. For these particular characters, they were conceived to be made out of wood and rope in real life. So to emulate that in 3D, the only parts that are deformed are the rope parts. All the other mesh items don't deform. So they can be dynamically parented to the rig. The mesh op meshes will all move with the character due to the UV transform mesh op. So we don't need to touch these. Make sure you check out William's 2D face on a 3D character 60 second tutorial on the Pixel Fondue YouTube channel for that process. 
So to dynamically parent the mesh items to the rig, select the first mesh item, the body and the thorax rig box. And then in the constraints tab, make sure compensation is on. And in setup mode, select and add parent. Now I just need to go through all the other wooden parts of the character and dynamically parent them to the rig. Out of setup mode, I can, I can move the rig and the wooden parts follow. I can now select all the wooden parts and in the assembly change the select menu to no so that I can't select them in the viewport by mistake now. Okay, so now let's bind the rope to the rig. To begin with, CBOX has a great function called Generate Weight Meshes, found here. Clicking on that will create a mesh item called Weight Mesh in the item list. This new mesh has all the weight map information embedded. And now to transfer that information, we need to make sure all the deformable mesh items are covered by the Weight Mesh item. With symmetry turned on and in component modes, we need to cover all the rope mesh. I will jump ahead for this part. Using the wireframe viewport helps to confirm that all the mesh or the rope mesh has been covered. Once that's done, select the rope mesh and the weight mesh together. Cbox has the cool function of just clicking on the bind here and all the weight map information will be transferred. You can see the normalizing folder has been created. And checking the weight maps here, we can confirm that all the rig item weight maps have been transferred. So hit O on the keyboard to bring up all the viewport properties to make sure that in the active meshes, show weight maps is checked. And now you'll be able to view the, all the weight maps in the viewport. Obviously, you'll need to go through and adjust the maps manually using the weight tools. This is a time consuming process, but the CBOX bind tool gives you a great starting point. In fact, many times it's just a matter of smoothing out the selected map to get a better blend between maps. I will often select the vertices that I want the smoothing to be limited to and click on smoothing as unwanted vertices can get weight information using smoothing. It's always a good idea to animate the character to check out what the bending and the uh, blending of the joints looks like and you can adjust them easily to make the curves much better. Mirroring the weight maps to the other side is an easy matter of copying the name of the correct map, making sure symmetry is selected. Go into vertex map and select mirror. Select the source map, paste the same name in and change the L to an R and click OK. Check that both maps are the same, then go through the same process for all the other joints. I will skip ahead for this process as the ropes on this character aren't that complicated to wait. And then there you have it, a rigged character box character ready for animation. That's it for this tutorial. In my next tutorial, I'll talk about how to track a live action shot in Synthize and then importing that into Modo as well as a character into the scene. Okay, thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye. Yum, yum.